Hey everyone, so um, this is uh, Marco Polo Season 2, Episode 2, which is entitled Hug. Um, so basically, um, the entire uh, episode starts off with, um, you know, you see Marco and Maylin, you know, riding um, the horse, kind of, I mean, not that quickly, but... It's kind of like at a uh, walk um, after they had gotten the um, after they had gotten the uh, boy emperor and um, basically um, they're walking around on the they're riding on the horses and the they're talking and then suddenly the boy has to go pee and mark goes like well it's your turn maylin you do it um or no she she's like your it's your turn because i've done it and she's like no i i don't want to do it and he ends up going to going to take the kid to go pee on a tree and um you know the kid him and the kid kind of talk for a little bit before um the kid kind of, you know, waves at someone, um, and so Marco turns to see who it is, and it's the woman that, um, was guarding him at the cab, uh, the house police, um, so apparently she didn't die, um, because I thought she died, because I don't remember seeing, seeing her, uh, actually fleeing from the house. Um, maybe it was just because I, I wasn't looking at the screen at the time when, when she did that, but, um, I guess, so I, so I guess I just assumed that she may have been killed, but, anyway, she, she didn't die, she, and then, so she starts cha uh, running towards Marco and the boy, and the little, little boy, um, and so Marco picks up the boy, runs back to the horses, and, uh, you know, and they start running really quickly, um, or, uh, yeah, running over quickly on the horses, um, to get away from her, and, and that's when the theme song comes on, and the opening credits start rolling, and things like that, um, and after that, uh, you see that, basically, they run all day on the horses, um, and, and, um, but the woman is, is, keep, is able to keep, up with them on foot, um, and Marco, uh, after, after they, you know, kind of stop for, uh, um, a little bit, Marco's like, well, why, why, like, why is, she, how is she able to keep up with us on horses, uh, while we're on horses, and she's only on foot, and Man's, Man's like, well, we can stay the fuck, you can stay if you want to fucking see, but I certainly am not gonna fucking stay, um, yeah, that, that's your issue, I'm not fucking staying to, uh, die here if I am to ever die soon so <laughs> which I thought I was like yes Milan, yes um but then um it goes to Kaidu and a horde of men basically you know hunting wild boar um you see them do that for a little bit and then um it goes to Catalan and, and Bayamba uh, coming out uh, from like a, the tree line uh, or from behind a tree uh, after having sex and, and they talk of the pending challenge and how and everything and uh, beyond, beyond brings up the fact that one of the fathers is going to have to die whether it's his or it, whether it's hers one of them is probably most likely going to have to die um, and yeah so they talk about that for a little bit um then Kublai and Chabi basically um, walk around outside together for a little bit, um, and something she said makes him yell at her. Um, they they're talking about um, okay, actually I can't even remember what they're talking about. But they're talking about something, and he yells at her about what they're talking about, and she advises him to make it look like he's enjoying her company, and he says he does. But she's like, well, they don't know that, and you certainly don't show it. Um, 
and you, or you start, and you start like, showing it, and he's like, well, I don't care what they think, and she's like, well, you should, <laughs> you should care about what they think, because what they think, what you, what they see you do or don't do is going to reflect on how they think of you and if they think negatively of you they're going to end up uprising against you so yeah she's basically saying yeah you should care about what they think um and then it goes back to Kaido and the horn of men you know kind of um uh, after their hunt of the wild boar and um they get kind of relaxing and this guy speaks to Kaido about talking about Kublai in front of as he as he calls Bayamba um Kaido's or uh, Kublai's bastard son um said uh because they don't know where his loyalty lie and Kaido's like well there's no secrets here um and Bayamba told Kublai that and he's like, and Kaido's explaining that Bayamba told Kai Kublai the challenge like a good son would. Um, then returned with the news that Kublai accepted the challenge. Um, so they continue to talk a little bit of Kublai and his ways, basically. Um, before um, he insults Bayamba, um, Bayamba, and uh, I mean, Bayamba gets up angrily. Um, starts making it look like he's about to walk away when, um, but then turns around and hits the guy and they start fighting. Um, so they fight for like a few minutes and then, um, a guy drops a, uh, a guy, a guy who previously had, um, you know, went off to, um, went off to, um, find the wild boar that was shot with an arrow, um, um, comes back with the wild boar that's dead now and drops in front of, um, the fighting Biamba and Guy, I don't know what his name is, um, and then it goes back to uh, Maylin and um, Marco, um, and she brings up the fact that he didn't choose Comblog and how guarded she is. Well, he is not, and she's wondering like it, how if he's not as guarded as um, she is, why he hasn't you know, run away and left, because he could, he, she says that he could have any, he could have an eight hour lead in any direction before he is noticed, um, and, he, and she's wondering how she could, how he could very well be bringing the child to his death, and Marco's like, well, the boy won't die, and it's like, but Mainland's like, no, children die every day because at the hands of Kublai and his... Um, whole role of like you know burning villages and killing and therefore killing innocent children. Um, Mario's like it's that's not the same thing. I mean maybe not entirely the same thing, but to me it's it's almost pretty much the same thing. And and clearly Milan is not convinced Marco's not doing the right is doing the right thing. Um, and then, um, the, it goes back to Kaido and the men that he's with, going back to Karakoram, uh, Karakoram, where, um, they see someone putting up a cross, um, and so, like, it's like this, like, large ten-foot cross or something like that, um, and so it's, we pretty much assume that it's uh, Kublai's uncle, um, and so the next scene is of um, Kodalan and um, 
the man fighting with Bayamba, Bayamba going to see Kula's uncle, and they say that they expected him a week before. Um, and he said, I think he said that he had like some something that he needed to do um, that prevented him from coming bef uh, before. Uh, I just don't remember what. Um, and so basically they're there because they want to have him support Kaidu and um, so that's basically why they're there is that they want to be able to have like have him um, support Kaidu and everything uh, and support and back him in the um, with the challenge and everything, um, but the uncle is like, if Kaidu wishes to have him by his side, he needs to come over and um, talk about it, come over himself and talk about it. Um, then it goes back to, uh, it goes to um, Kambalak where Ahmed gets word from a soldier that there are two riders with a little boy and he tells Kublai that, and then, um, then the next scene is Mainland and Marco going in front of Kublai alone by themselves without that, um, well, the boy's there, but, and everyone else is pretty much there as well, and so Marco gets awarded, is rewarded, um, for finding the boy, Marco's like, well, Maylin helped me a great deal, and if it wasn't for her, I'd be dead, um, and so he asks if she is able, if she, if she is allowed to, uh, or she, he asks for her to be allowed to stand up and pay tribute. So he does, uh, or, and before I, before I go any further, it seems like they cut to Ahmed and he looks, doesn't look pleased at all about this. Um, so, but, um, Kublai lets her stand up and make, make her pay tribute. Um, but he stops her in the middle of what she's trying to say. And then make sure, you know, uh, get down on her knees and, like, you know, kind of basically kiss the damn floor. <laughs> um, Marco then tells Mar- uh, Kublai tell then asks Marco to tell him about China, and Marco's like, uh, they're still attempting to come to, to terms with his rule. Um, and then, um, Marco sees, uh, or, uh, not, uh, he doesn't really need to see it at first, but, um, so a couple, you hear a couple of people kind of laugh, at, um, after, like, while he's talking, and he looks, he looks behind, um, so then he therefore looks behind Kublai and sees the kid, um, sitting on, um, the throne, and, Kublai doesn't really do anything at first of it, like, he, he doesn't really stay or do anything at first, um, in regard to this, um, but then after, like, a minute, after, like, a minute, he, he laughs, but he, um, clearly looks kind of concerned about it after he stops laughing, um, and after everyone's dismissed from the world court, um, Marco and Jingham say hi to each other, um, still clearly on good terms with each other, um, and then Jingle introduces him, uh, introduces Marco to his new bride, which is the fake Kokachin and everything, and she apparently seems unwell after a minute or two, and, and is asked if she's feeling well, she's like, mm, I'm not really feeling that well, so I'm just gonna go back to my room, um, until she does that, um, Um, then it cuts to a scene of Ahmed and Malin talking, and, um, Ahmed asks why Malin, um, asks Malin why Marco defended her, and she replies that she deserved it, and he, that he's a decent human being, which I totally agree with, because she kind of did deserve it, because, I mean, she not only helps Marco more than he, he, thought he needed help, but she saved his life, <laughs> like he said, so you'd think that he would, you know, she, she, she would be 
praised for that and you know stuff like that um but Ahmed is like well I don't like being cut in articles like boo hoo you like you fuck you then like come on like really so many issues with him um so Milan is like well Kai, uh, Kai, uh, Kublai wins the challenge is the plan still gonna go forward? The ori- original plan. Um, do they are they gonna go back to the original plan and is is it gonna go forward and everything? He's like he does, he doesn't really say yes or no right away, um, but what he does say is it's better to take everything from him um, first, um, like things like his empress, his children, his army, but most importantly, wait, what needs to be taken in in, in terms in, in regards to Ahmed is that. Um, all of the golden, uh, the golden chair that he sits on needs to be taken. Um, and then she's, she's like, well, I want to see Ling. She whispers, this, whispers, I want to see Ling. Because, um, he told her that if she found the boy emperor, he would let her see her daughter. And she's like, and you will, basically, you will. Um. And as this whole thing is going on, you see her wrapping a rope around him. Um, mm-hmm. Assumingly because um, it's some sort of like, I, I don't know, the sexual thing? I don't know what it, what's the reason why. Um, anyway. So, um, that's what's going on with that, um, and I think they have sex, uh, after that, like, at the very end of the scene, I think that's what they do, I don't know for sure, though. Um, then it goes to Kaidu visiting his mother, and the thing is, is that his mother, like, Mm -hmm. his mother is, um, living far away from Karakoram. Um and so she's she's kind of upset about that, which I could, I could, I guess can be uh, understandable. Um but that's that's not the whole point of the scene. Um what happens in this scene is that he's like, well, he's talking to her about um going to get um Kublai's uncle to back him and she's like well you're gonna you're gonna have to you know kind of speak to him yourself if you want to have him back you and he, uh, Kaidu was like well I'm not gonna beg for him to come see me it's like whoa she's like well you need him like you need him and his backing so you're gonna have to go talk to him whether you want to talk to him or not um like what or at least want to talk to him yourself or not um and then that whole scene ends and um marco walks in on hundreds uh training with a few men um and Marco, then, uh, after the, those guys leave, Marco explains to Hunter Eyes that when he fought the woman in the house, she seemed to recognize his training and paused at it. Um, and Hunter Eyes tells him to show him what he need, what, what Marco means. And when he does, when Marco does that, Hunter Eyes doesn't really say much else. Um, I mean, I think he knows what was, um, personally, I think it's someone who is fairly close, was fairly close to, uh, Hunter Eyes, um, since Hunter Eyes came from South China, um, and I think it's, I think, so I think it's someone that's close to him, um, or was fairly close to him before he came to Johnny Young and everything. Um, and then, um, that's the end of that scene. 
Um, it go then goes to fake Coco Chan and everything, and her in Jingum's room, and it's clear she has miscarried. Um, or it's that's what it seems like to me that she miscarried. And Jingum comes, uh, Jingum has has come in and he's trying to comfort her and everything, and she says it. Um, she kind of rebuffs him and says that well. He didn't marry her, marry her because he loved her. He married her because she was forced upon him, which is not untrue at all. It's relatively accurate. Um, and then he asks her if if she ever thought of his mother when they had sex, and she answers that she has once or twice, which clearly wasn't what he wanted to hear. He it was basically a rhetorical question which he then tells her that it's like really <laughs> like what <laughs> why 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 did you think that you really needed to answer that um anyway so that's that's the whole that whole scene <laughs> um uh, that's basically the whole scene after like he basically says that you know we can always try again um and then it goes to kaidu going up to kublai's uncle Finally, after like three days, um, when, cause when he, the, his, the uncle has to leave in the morning because he has this thing that he needs to deal with, um, and, um, um, and then before you actually see what they talk about, they go to Marco and Fate Kokichin bumping into each other in the hallway. And he tells her that when he came back to Zhang that he tried to find her, but she was already gone. And she says, thankfully, she was already gone. Um, and she's trying to make it look like she doesn't really care about him anymore. But clearly she does when um, she leaves and um, when she goes into the next corridor, she, she sees, so it looks like she's crying. Um... Then, um, you see, um, Ahmed expressing distaste and displeasure at harboring the boy emperor, and Ahmed thinks that showing that the boy emperor is given that nice treatment in public is a bad thing, um, it will cause people to side with Kaidu and the upcoming challenge, um, and he, so he basically expresses that, and then it goes to, um, Marco... Jingam, Ahmed, and Kublai sitting in a, a, at a table uh, under like a veranda or like a little thing, um, little patio thing, and um, Marco explains what he saw in the river and that he saw hundreds of bodies, um, and he explains that he feels that the South is um, not secure yet, and but Kublai is like, well, I think we're liberators. And Marco's like, well, no. Um, they think of you as occupiers, not liberators. Um, especially since that there are several Mongol sword soldiers on every corner. Um, and then Marco asks this very important question. At least I think it's a very important question uh, to Kublai. And he's like, what if they stop killing themselves and then start killing the Mongol Mongol soldiers and everything? And Kublai says, well, I'll just top them and their spirits with the full force of the army. And it's like, Ahmed, Ahmed's like, um, tells Kublai that Sadat would, would not have imprisoned him, but paraded his head around the streets. And Kublai is like, well, what do you suggest, Ahmed? And Ahmed's like, well, parade the boy emperor's head around the streets. Um, and Ahmed's a little... Uh, continues saying that he, the boy is a symbol, um, but Marco and Jingam disagree on killing him. They both vehemently deny this, the, um, the uh, voice um, to not kill him. And Marco says um, he was he, he that he points out that he once was here um, against his will, and um, he turned out to be a supporter of Kublai and and someone who 
you know, supports uh, or uh, uh, does stuff for the Kublai anyway. Um, and why not? And and just basically he asks like, why not do the same thing for the Boy Emperor as well before that scene ends. And then it goes back to Kaidu and Kublai's uncle speaking. And um, Kublai's uncle says that he needs to see what Kaidu will concede. Uh, what what, what Ka, 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 Ka will be willing to concede, so ba- basically implying that um, the cup that is sitting in front of Kaidu is something that he needs to drink, um, and so Kaidu lifts up the cup full of wine, uh, makes it look like he's about to take a take a sip or drink of the uh, of the, of the drink and that but then you know kind of pours it out um Kaidu then says I'm sorry for wasting your time get something leaves without the uncle support um Chavi then goes up to um Kublai who is sitting on the throne by himself and she's like we'll hide the boy in the monastery in a city far off far away and Kublai is like, well, it's too late now because the boy will then, you know, not remember or um, or not forget what Kublai did to um, did to him and his father and his family. And when the boy gets older, because he won't forget what Kublai did, he will want to kill Kublai. Um, so then Ahmed brings the boy in front of Kublai and orders Ahmed out to deal with the boy alone. Ahmed goes to this guy who I think his name is Oris. Um, can't be sure of that yet because I don't think they actually said his name. But he goes up to this guy and um, who apparently has helped him out previously um, with uh, what I think is um, hiring the assassins um, that were to kill um, Kublai and um, and tells the the, the dude the guy that the Khan is about to make a decision he is about to regret, meaning what and and um, then he Ahmed's like well the, he needs the the guy's help once more, and when when I heard uh, Ahmed say that um, Kublai is about to make a decision he's about to regret, I think what he meant was was that. Kublai is about to do, to, about to make the decision that he, Ahmed wants him to make, so that it will support his plan from earlier, so that he can, you know, um, strip Kublai of everything that he loves first, and then take Kublai's life. Um, that's what I think is what Ahmed make, means by that, personally. If you guys disagree about that, you can just, just please tell me about it, I would love to hear about it, um, and then the last scene of the whole episode is, um, Kublai standing up with a knife in his right hand, telling the boy that he is condemning him to death, but then the boy starts crying, and he's like, he yells for the boy to stop crying, the boy is like, you know, asking, asking Kublai all these questions, um, one being if, uh, if the boy is bad, and if, um, and another is if, if that, if, if, um, the boy being bad is why Kublai wants to kill him. Um, and then the boy is like, well, I don't want to die, and so he runs up to Kublai, um, and, and runs up to Kublai and, and goes into his arms crying. Um, and Kublai seems to be comforting the boy, but what he really is doing is suffocating him to death. And then you see Marco in the doorway, um, when the boy's lifeless body drops to the floor. Um, and it, it seems like Marco has seen the entire thing going on where the boy is being killed by Kublai. And that's the whole end of it. Um... So basically, um, my predictions so far pretty much remain the same. Um, 
I really have no new uh, predictions. So basically, I'm just going to quickly talk about the predictions I made previously. One is that um, Hunter Dye is actually working with um, Ahmed and Mainland to take down um, Kublai because I just don't I just don't know I just don't really believe that uh, Hunter Eyes has really forgiven um, uh, Kublai for not only making uh, taking him captive but blinding him for the rest of for the rest of his life so I just don't think that's that he's as forgiving um, as he's making he's making himself out to be so that's why I think it's going on with hundred eyes um two i think well now that um now that um fake kokachin is not pregnant by marco um that is discarded so i i'm gonna go um with the whole notion that possibly um Kodalin is pregnant by marco and she's it's gonna be revealed that she's pregnant um, but now that she's had sex with <clears throat> sex with Bayamba, she can pass it off as Bayamba's kid now, um, as well. But um, the kid's gonna have Marco's Latin features, so therefore it's gonna be hard to say that the kid is Bayamba's. Um, third is um, I think Maylin will still end up running away with her daughter, Stoner Leader. I personally think so. I, or at least I hope so. That um, basically that's all of my predictions so far. I may be forgetting something, forgetting one of them, because I have this feeling I'm forgetting one of my predictions. Um, but basically that's all my predictions and and everything so far as the season, uh, so far as the um, series is concerned at this point in time. Um, with that said. Um, Hit like if you like this video. Um, please comment uh, and hit subscribe um, if you want to see more of my videos and any new videos I put up. Um, and I will see you in the next Marco Polo episode. Bye.